me the floor and thank, thank you to give me the opportunity to to present again um, one more time uh, what we've done with JSX Graph and uh, what we want to achieve in in, in general. Um, so uh, I will uh, share a presentation with you. <clears throat> but first, uh, I share you some some slides just to present the context, and after that, um, I will demonstrate how it works. And uh, this, this time I will focus on a specific new development. So uh, our product is called Eleda, and we are a ed tech company, um, Cadetude. And uh, we are two co-founders, and uh, we have a um, long background in uh, higher education institution and also in education uh, in the public sector mainly, but also in private sector. And we start the company two years, more than two years ago now, and we focus on math teaching. And um, no, mainly we work with French institution, but we have the ambition to work uh, in international context. Um, recently, we work with the French Ministry of Education uh, to work on the math activities uh, from the primary school to the um, baccalauréat, with the, with the, which is the last year of secondary school in France. And also we have um, a research a partnership with University of Mulhouse. It's near the, the frontier, the German uh, frontier in the east of France. And we work on um, math activities for first year university. So what is our main objective? It's our main objective is a wide one. Uh, we want to improve learners' math skills, and we want to focus uh, on maybe most difficult students as well as gift students. And uh, it means that we want to make adaptability. Uh, we make we want to make uh, activities in math easily adaptable, and it's uh, really important to tailor activity uh, based on uh, learner starting skills. So one of our main objective, and it's my it's the, the the key point of my presentation of the demonstration, it's about teacher, uh, because we know that uh, all teachers are not developers. And uh, we, we don't want to make uh, teacher developers. And on the market, we find some tools that uh, are too basic for developing math activities. And on the other side, we find really uh, coding tool and which needs to use uh, computer science code, JavaScript, et cetera. But in the middle, there are maybe some place for intermediate tool um, not for developer, not for uh, basic activities, but that's that's why we want to make a dedicated tool for teachers who are not developer but want to develop their own activities and advanced activities. And for learners, we want to provide them through these activities uh, some way to experiment and to fail because we are we we. We strive to promote learning by failing. Uh, we think that it's really important to uh, get skill in math, uh, to work and to fail and to succeed and to fail again, to understand once we, we get comfortable uh, with a concept in math. So we have three projects and I will focus today on Eleda Designer. Eleda Designer is a no-code authoring tool. So no-code, many of you, I think, know uh, Scratch system. So it's uh, more or less the same uh, paradigm. So we use blocks to develop and to design uh, pedagogical activities. And it offers um, a user-friendly tool to give, to, to, to develop, to design activities. But also we, prevent with no code tool uh, syntax error as, my, uh, as the, the last as the last presentation shows it's really difficult to to enter into a code and to debug code so and no code approach give the opportunity to prevent most of common mistake when to, you try to design a math activities but 
also a no-code tool is a real computer science tool you can develop as with a real language. And we could, for example, insert and include randomized uh, variables into activities. And it's really important because to generate um, multiple activities. Also, you can develop and with a no-code tool, some tailored feedback, which depends on answer, uh, on learners' answers. And one of the main advantage of no-code approach is that you can merge uh, some different scientific libraries to work together. So we try to um, connect uh, to make different scientific libraries uh, pluggable amongst themselves. It means that you can use a computer algebra system with JSX graph with uh, some uh, graphical uh, representation with some randomized object that we have developed uh, internally. And uh, it's, it is really important to make design of activities uh, as much as user-friendly as we can. So how it works? It works like that. You have on the left, the, the, um, the, the left side of the user interface is a no-code, so it's similar as Scratch, similar to Scratch, to Scratch, sorry. And on the right side, you have the, the results. And when you design the activity with blocks, we instantly see the, the, the activity, the result in terms of activities for learners. So here you can see that we define var variables and you choose, you develop wrong answer and you design a MCQ question about uh, computing a simple product. And here are the results that is displayed on the right. And you can change parameters and you see instantly uh, the activity uh, changing. Another example of uh, in a geometry, for example. So we have developed some randomized objects because we think that it's important to promote randomization, random, randomized activities. Uh, so, for example, here we define a number, a random number, and a random polygon. And here we design when an, a randomized activity and how it looks for learners. It looks like that. He has a randomized activity, so he can train limitless with several uh, situations until he gets skilled about the, the skill you target when you, are, when you are the designer. So here he can repeat and repeat and he can succeed, he can fail, he can repeat the, the same activity, but with uh, different data uh, values. So here, another, another example. Here we use GSX graph again to generate a clock, but it's, it's done with blocks. And we ask teacher to read the time on the clock. Here are the result for the, on the learner's side. So the same principle. Another activity here, there, there are some LaTeX uh, rendering and uh, we use Majax and we use Markdown rendering to make, uh, um, to, 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 to be able to, to blend some uh, uh, mathematical expression in J JSX, but also in, uh, in, uh, in other uh, numeric activity. The last one, or uh, on curves, we have to recognize the derivatives. Yeah, that's that's the so that's the main principle. It's randomize, random how to randomize activity, and how to give tailor feedback. So I will show you um, how I can build uh, quickly an activity, and how can I design some tailor feedback to explain learners why they failed or how he can improve his skill on the topic. So I will share. Eleda. Now. So this is the user interface. So we, you recognize the, the interface to where you can find many blocks to use multiple choice question, open question in math, reordering, et cetera, et cetera. Some block to design feedback. 
media, text list, and of course, math blocks with algebra blocks. Uh, you have some expressions of algebraic expression, you have poly object polynom, and of course, geometry, which covers um, more, most basic uh, GSX graph uh, instruction. So here for this uh, workshop, I, I would like to, to, to choose a simple exercise to, and I want to ask students to work on um, orthogonal reference frame. And I want to ask students to place a point with its coordinates. So it's a simple case and I will use JSX graph uh, graphic with a point and I will ask students to move the point to the right place and see if it uh, find the solution or not. So here I just prepare a little bit the, the workspace uh, to not waste too much time. So I create four variables. So I use the variables here category. So first of first of all, I defined a title there, the language and description not needed there. And when I click on play, I can see immediately all the program. So here, all blocks attached to the main block will be uh, executed, executed. So the graph, I have a block graphic, so I use there. So I fix the, the boundaries and I want to see axis and grid. Also, I define X. So it's the first coordinate of the point I want the student to work on. So I use a random integral block. Huh? I can find it there, here, if I want a new one, okay. I set Y at the same, random integer, and I set a point, a point A. And point A, I can find this block in geometry, of course, here, you can find it. I've prepared it, yes. And you have many, several uh, parameters that you, you may recognize from JSX graph. So it is the color, it is the, uh, the label, it is uh, if it is locked or not, or it is the magnetizer there. So when I choose a magnetizer one, it means that I want uh, the point movable one by one unit. So there I can just to show you how it works, I can just display now the variable graph. So I play and I have the graphic there. And but I have not the point A in my graphic. So because I forgot to draw my point in the graphic graph. So I take the variable point A that I just defined before and I insert my block there. So hey, here. And you can see just for example, if I lock the point and I replay the activity, I see that it's not movable. It's I unlock the point. I see I can move it there. So let's do the statement now. I prepare a block with a paragraph. It's uh, just a display block. Uh, it means that I want just to display the statement. So place the point R to the coordinate and I mix some uh, numeric elements, numeric object and text there. So if I see there, you can see that I have my title and I have my statement. If I replay, course coordinates change because it's random number. It's X and Y. No, I want to display the graphic. Okay. I take again, draw point A and I display the graph in my statement. Okay. So I can move the point. And now I will ask a question. So it's a question block, question on graphic. And I have to give the good answer condition, how it works. I just have to say, uh, what, what are the condition to make the answer right? And for that, I have a simple block I prepare there. And I compare 
the coordinates of point A with X chosen randomly before, and the coordinates Y of point A with the Y chosen before randomly. Why don't I put this condition there? Okay, so I just test it. If it works, I play it three and eight, three and eight, three and eight. Wow, got it, tried the first time. So it works, but I can retest it. If I don't find it, okay. So I have here a simple, a really simple, a really ba basic feedback. But what I want to achieve now, it's to test and to help students to solve the problem. And for example, if he plays correctly the X and not the Y, so here six, it's okay but minus 10, it's not. I have a standard feedback, so it's not, uh, it's not convenient, it's not enough, I think, for my, for my learner, I would like to improve that. So I want, I will add some blocks in the feedback component and we'll show you how it works. So I can maybe test, yes. I can test in my feedback if, for example, so I copy paste the same test, but I would like to, to know if students uh, find the right answer for X, but not for the, for the Y. And I can display a specific message there. We, we have, you have well placed the X coordinate, but not the Y. And I would like also, so I can test that. So I play minus eight, okay, minus eight. So I place correctly the, the X and not the Y. Okay, you can see that I have my tail of feedback there, but it's a text to a text feedback. I can improve that. I would like to maybe draw a line pass by the correct X to tell students just to follow this line to, to improve his answer and to find the Y position. So here, if I yeah, put there, but not the Y, and I put there a new line where you can put the point you know, to find the Y solution. That is more or less a simple example, a basic example to see how the feedback can work. And of course, I can add many feedback to take into account regular failures, uh, regular fails of students uh, to, um, to improve uh, their learning. So I, I, I would like to show you some example in the same way. So here, it's a randomized activity on um, clock reading. And so I will choose a specific here, maybe. I, so it's randomized here. I have to place 10, 58. If I use 10, 58 like that, the feedback block analyze the answer and can give a specific feedback, for example, there because kids um, regularly make the, the, this mistake. They don't place exactly the hour and they, they don't take into account the elapsed minutes. Another example, yeah, it's about a, a, a thin function here. It's interesting to, I can randomly, okay. So for example, if I put there like that, I have to put, I have to represent minus two X plus one. What is interesting in there, it's that I explain what is the answer given by, by students. I explained that the, 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 the line he represents uh, is uh, minus X. So it's interesting to analyze learner answer. Another example, it's about derivative, maybe the, 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 the clock is, the time is running out. So I will go there, for example. Another interesting example is there, we generate a box diagram, diagram and we ask 
for students, many statements, many questions, wrong or false question. And I implement in each of feedback some explanation graphically. So I explain how to read. Sorry, it's in French. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry for that. It's difficult. I try to use an automatic translation for some activities, but okay. But I think you understand how it works. Uh, so we add on this diagram some feedback, on this diagram the same feedback, but it could be different. Another example here. Yeah. You have a random function, and you have to find the range where this assessment is true. Okay, and there we give feedbacks on the same graphic, on the same JSX graphic. The last one, which blends different kind of block, JSX graph, but also some nested question. I mean, by, ex by example, I will show you. So here I have to recognize if there, there, there are linear um, correspondence, uh, linear proportionality between the uh, data presented in the table. So if I say not or yes, okay, I will show another one because I prefer when yes. If it's yes, I ask another question there to ask students to give and to compute the slope of the line of the, the representation. So it's kind of nested question and a chain question. It's important so you can give feedback and you can ask new question to understand why it fails or why it succeeds or maybe deeper question to enter into more complex uh, reasonments. And for finishing and uh, to conclude, I will just show you a kind of uh, activity that a math teacher has made uh, with us. Um, it's more a course one. Uh, it's to explain how um, equation equation uh, equation works uh, in the second first year of secondary school. So there we use JSX graph to represent the balance and to explain how equation works and how you can equilibrate them. So I can continue, and the the, the reasoning is more and more advanced and you understand how you equilibrate equation once you get on the one side x and on one on the other side units okay and after that you have to find by yourself the right coefficients and you have to move elements step by step so this is a the main um, the main uh, improvement from last year that i want to show you um, and uh, maybe if you have any question, uh, I'm pleased to to answer to answer that and to show you whatever you want to explore. Thank you.